Hello, and welcome back to our Scrum Study course on a guide to the Scrum body of knowledge. We are in Module 4 and have just finished learning about the importance of business justification. In this session, we're going to learn about some of the tools used to assess and evaluate business justification, as well as some other aspects associated with project justification and project selection. It is not necessary or even recommended to use every available technique for every project. Some techniques are not appropriate depending on the specific project, and techniques may be used to assess projects individually or to compare the expected value of multiple projects. Let's now understand the how project value is estimated. The value to be provided by business projects can be estimated using various methods such as return on investment, net present value, and internal rate of return. First method we are going to learn is return on investment. Return on investment when used for project justification assesses the expected net income to be gained from a project. Return on investment equals project revenue minus project cost divided by project cost. The second method is net present value. Net present value is a method used to determine the current net value of a future financial benefit given an assumed inflation or interest of rate. The third method is internal rate of return. Internal rate of return, or IRR, is a discount rate on an investment in which the present value of cash inflows is made equal to the present value of cash outflows for assessing a project's rate of return. When comparing projects, one with a higher IRR is typically better. After estimating the project value, the next step is to plan for delivering value. This can be done using several methods. The first method we will learn is value stream mapping. Value stream mapping uses flowcharts to illustrate the flow of information needed to complete a process. This technique may be used to streamline a process by helping to determine non-value added elements. The second method is customer value-based prioritization. Customer value-based prioritization places primary importance on the customer and strives to implement user stories with the highest value first. Such high-value user stories are identified and moved to the top of the prioritized product backlog. A team can use a variety of prioritization schemes to determine high-value features. A. Simple schemes. Simple schemes involve labeling items as priority one, two, three, or high, medium, and low, and so on. Although this is a simple and straightforward approach, it can become problematic because there is often a tendency to label everything as priority one or high. Even high, medium, and low prioritization schemes can encounter similar difficulties. Moscow prioritization. The Moscow prioritization scheme derives its names from the first letters of the phrase must have, should have, could have, and won't have. This prioritization method is generally more effective than simple schemes. The labels are in decreasing order of priority, with must have features being those without which the product will have no value, and won't have features being those that, although they would be nice to have, are not necessary to be included. C. Monopoly money. This technique involves giving the customer monopoly money, or false money, equal to the amount of the project budget, and asking them to distribute it among the user stories under consideration. In this way, the customer prioritizes based on what they are willing to pay for each user story. D. 100-point method. The 100-point method was developed by Dean Leffingwell and Don Widrig in 2003. It involves giving the customer 100 points they can use to vote for the features that they feel are most important. Finally, E, Kano analysis. The Kano analysis was developed by Noriaki Kano, 1984, and involves classifying features or requirements into four categories based on customer preferences. One, exciters or delighters. 
Features that are new or high value to the customer. Two, satisfiers. Features that offer value to the customer. Three, dissatisfiers. Features which, if not present, are likely to cause a customer to dislike the product, but do not affect the level of satisfaction if they are present. Four, indifferent. Features that will not affect the customer in any way and should be eliminated. Figure 4.4 depicts an illustration of the Kano analysis. The third method to plan for delivering value is relative prioritization ranking. This method entails a simple listing of user stories in order of priority. This is an effective method for determining the desired user stories for each iteration or release of the product or service. The purpose is to create a simple, single list with the goal of prioritizing features rather than being distracted by multiple prioritization schemes. Defining the Minimum Marketable Features, or MMF, is extremely important during this process so that the first release or iteration happens as early as possible, leading to increased ROI. Normally, these user stories would rank highest in priority. The fourth method to plan for delivering value is story mapping. This is a technique to provide a visual outline of the product and its key components. Story mapping, first formulated by Jeff Patton in 2005, is commonly used to illustrate product roadmaps. Story maps depict the sequence of product development iterations and map out which features will be included in the first, second, third, and subsequent releases. This brings us to the end of our session on techniques used for business justification. I look forward to seeing you in our next session on performing continuous business justification and confirming benefit realization. Until then, goodbye and thank you for learning with us.